Hello, my dear students. Now it's the final lecture in our semiconductor devices course. It's the final station in our journey. In this lecture, we are doing. We will do something different. Actually, Ella. we will uh, move from the normal academic lectures and we go to, into a research topic. Usually, in my uh, X level modules, I used to make the final lecture with a different way or a different flavor or, or with a different taste. I mean, in this final lecture, you will not have a manuscript. It's just an open research uh, topic. Uh, I will go through concepts. I will not be interested in equations and numbers and all this stuff. Uh, it's an open topic. You can read over the internet. I will supply you with a lot of literature papers, uh, chapters from books and all the stuff that you can understand the topic from. Uh, again, there will be not, there will not be a manuscript, a lecture script. There will not be also um, a, a tutorial, a, 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 a tutorial or a problem-based tutorial. Uh, you will find the lecture. You will find this recorded lecture. You will find a huge uh, amount of supporting documents that you can read in order to understand the topic if you need. Uh, it's a part of the pro it's a part of the pro course, but usually the question uh, related to this chapter is an optional question, so you may not uh, you may choose not to answer it. It's an optional question. Uh, as normal, you know, you have, we have an optional question in our final exam. So uh, maybe it's a, a new trial. It's more toward a research topic rather than to be an, a normal academic lecture, as I mentioned. I hope that. It 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 um, it sounds to be uh, something good for you, a new way to open new topics in your head. Uh, you are now a few months uh, far from your research and design graduation project, so I believe that you you have to go or you have to tackle different research topics. You have to go outside the normal box of academic lecture. So maybe this is one of the gaps that you can do. Uh, such a trial. So please permit me now to start the lecture and then by the end of the lecture I will have some also information for information you. So let's please start our uh, tunneling field effect transistor lecture. I believe uh, you should now able to see uh, my slides I think or my desktop. Not my desktop. So let's now start to Sure, and then let's make another trial. Okay, yeah. So I hope now you can see my presentation, my slides, and now let me turn on uh, my laser pointer and let's now start lecture number seven: tunneling field effect transistors, or what is usually abbreviated by the T foot. Okay. Let's start the, so maybe the first question comes to your mind, why we should change the MOSFET? We already have a running MOSFET. We already have a MOSFET where all the technology are constructed with. So why we should change the MOSFET? If you return back to our first slide in this course, you will, you will remember what's called the Moore loop, where Moore starts to expect that every 18 months the number of transistors in a certain area is somehow double. So that means that you get more and more and more smaller transistors, and then you need, or you can functionalize in a better way, in a higher speed way. Also, based on your previous experience in the electronic courses, either electronic one or electronic two, and maybe also in this course, you know that there are two main functions for the transistors. Either the analog function, which is the most famous one, which is an amplifier. I believe you already studied in year one and year two, where MOSFET is working as an amplifier, this common emitter, uh, or sorry, common source configuration. When you have an input in the gate and then how an output in the drain, and you can see that the output is amplified with respect to the input and this, this wing and all this stuff. And also we, we have a very, another famous uh, application for the MOSFET where it's put in the digital electronics. When MOSFET is integrated into digital electronics, the issue is about 
that the mosque is working as a switch. Now, one of the main important of this switch is what we can call the switching rate or the frequency to make turning turn, turn in and turn off. And this switching rate, or this ability to make turn in and turn off, is a very important issue. And we we are usually say that the turn on device compared to the mask here, what offers is what about the delay? The delay actually is a main function in the capacity. You know that in the most we have a capacitance. Actually, maybe in this course we didn't have enough time to investigate about this capacitance. Maybe you will have a more or a better opportunity when you deal with the VLSI course next semester in S1 in year four, because the capacitance is a very important issue in the CMOS technology, which is the main topic for the VLSI courses. However, the capacitance is a very important parameter related to the, to the delay. Usually you know that the charging time, which is somehow proportional to the RC or the resistance of the capacitance, and the discharging time again is also proportional to the RC. So here in the left-hand side, you see a normal graph. You used to see such a graph, which is a VG versus RD. Here this graph is somehow interested in what's called the sub threshold performance, where VG is smaller than uh, V threshold. However, we can say that we have almost somehow a similar performance between the MOSFET and the CFIT. Maybe it's a different way or a different trend, but uh, sorry, not a different, uh, uh, a different function, but with, with the same trend. So both are, are an increasing function with VG. Maybe in the case of the MOSFET, it's somehow a, a linear region. However, here it's somehow a maybe a parabolic region or a parabolic function or something like that. But this is not the secret. Let's now turn to the left hand side of this figure. When we compare the delay of a MOSFET in the black side with the delay of the TFT in the red side, this is really, 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 really interesting. Now, as you can say, that the TFT achieves eight times reduced delay with respect to the, uh, the normal MOSFET. Here, of course, the delay in the picoseconds. So for example, this is here around 1,000 picosecond, which is thanks to nanosecond delay, and this is 100 nanoseconds. That's basically mean if we have a commercial TFT, we can have a processor, which is eight times faster than the normal processor implemented with this CMOS technology. So you can imagine to what extent this is very interesting for the electronics industry to make a higher, a faster, a lower delay devices if we succeed to have a commercial difference. So this is the main motivation why people start to think about this. Of course, you know, we already tackled this in the first lecture about what should that the, the minimum feature length, which is the length of the channel, when this length of the channel is going down and that the technology somehow is saturated and we have to search for a new architecture for the MOSFET, if you remember, and we already tackled about that. I believe that you did an, an, an amazing work in your project. Some of your projects were, were, were about the carbon nanotube uh, field of transistors, and other projects were about the channel lens in the MOSFETs and another the MOSFETs characteristics and I believe you all of you did a very great job in that so I believe you already understand these issues and these constraints in literature so now this is a motivation let's turn to the next slide please and let's do what about the structure I believe that yes, you already remember the most structure the most structure is the normally we have a torsion drain both are with the same type of doping for example when we are talking about an inner channel MOSFET then you have an N dope channel and sorry, an N dope drain and an N dope source. We have an P type substrate in between, we have an oxide layer, and we have a gate. This is the most famous, most structure you have. Here we have something a bit different. Here we have a double or a different type of doping in both sides. As you can see, for example, here, this is a P side where 
the source is doped P side and the drain is doped M side. Again, what is in between is an intrinsic material. Here is a, this is indium arsenide, one of the most famous material used for TFT application. And also this is the VG or the Bay gate voltage. So somehow, maybe somehow looks like a MOSFET. However, in this case, we have two different types of doping in the right hand side on the back and the left hand side for the mm -hmm. drain source. And what is between is not a P type or not, it's not the reverse. What's between is an intrinsic. So somehow this is a famous junction. Actually, if we make a cross sectional here, you will have a PIN junction. Actually, this PIN junction is very famous in many applications, not only in the T fluid application, it has a lot of application. We have or we can implement a dye, a Shockley dye using the PIN junctions. You can read about it in literature if you are interested. So it's very famous in literature, but we will now see how this PIN junction will act like a transistor by the tunneling field effect. So this is the, the, the effect. And the main observation here, before going into details, that the current will flow from the source to the drain, or actually to be accurate, the electron will flow from the source to the drain, not, only, not due to diffusion, not due to drift, but due to tunnel. If you remember, in our course, when I start to demonstrate the drift diffusion model, maybe one year ago in the material course, and in the beginning of this course, I said to you that we are dealing with what's called the semi-classical drift diffusion model. In this semi-classical model, we have two purposes to have an electrical current. Either due to electrical field, which is drift, or due to different in concentration, which is due to diffusion. So before the semi-classical model, or during the semi-classical model, actually, these are the purposes. Now you have another purpose, which is the natanoning effect. We already deal with this tunneling effect before, if you remember, when we understand the concept of the breakdown, because the breakdown is somehow related to this tunneling effect. But now, the breakdown is something not so good for a diode or for a transistor. This is now, we utilize the tunneling effect in order to make something interesting for MOSFET, so, or for field effect transistors. So let's see how tunneling will work. Here we have to demonstrate a very important slide. Of course, as I mentioned earlier, I will not ask you about equations in this chapter, but I have to state this important quantum tunneling effect. Here is a very important point to know that to, in order to understand the tunneling effect, you don't need, or you will not be able to understand the tunneling effect mathematically using what we have studied in this course, which is the normal drift diffusion model. You have to turn to the quantum model in order to understand the tunneling. As I mentioned earlier, in the drift diffusion model, or in what we can call the semi-classical model, current can move either due to drift or due to diffusion. Now we have another term, which is a probability for tunneling. This interesting equation, I, I need only you to, 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 to observe what is here, what is in the right hand side. What are the what are the factors that affect the tunneling field effect transistor? Or what are the factors that affect the tunneling pro pro uh, probability? Now, the width, the width of the channel, the effectiveness of the particle, the height of the barrier, all these stuff affect the probability of tunneling. Here, for example, you have a probability of 0.016, which is, of course, not so, so high, but it will be enough for electron to move. So this is the tunneling probability. This is the tunneling current. Again, you are not asked to understand or to memorize any of these questions. I'm just demonstrating concepts through equations, that's all. However, in order to go through the mathematical details, you have to start quantum mechanics from, from beginning. And I believe that this is somehow a post-basic course. So let's now turn to the next slide. Let's now start to understand the concept of the tunneling field effect of a transistor or how electron is moving from the tunneling field effect transistor. Here we have a comparison. I actually, I, I forgot to mention that this slide is not actually my slide. This slide is a uh, slide from Intel. It's demonstrating a slide. It's published using NanoHub. It's also published uh, on the Intel website. So it's an available everywhere. I just use this because it's somehow very well prepared. 
slides in order to understand the T the T fit. I just add my touches here and there. So I'm just collecting data, not my original data. I have to mention that. So here we have the MOSFET and here we have the T fit. As I mentioned earlier, in the MOSFET, the source and drain are are with the same type of doping. For example, here N plus and N plus or N W plus and N W plus. Of course, you know now that this type of doping means that it's a very high dope source and very high dope drain, and this is the case. Now it's a different here. We have a P type, we have an N type. So normally, when we are plotting the normal uh, cross sectional um, energy bandogram for uh, 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 MOSFET or metal oxide field effect transistor, we have this N, P, N structure. I believe if you turn back to our lecture, lecture number five, I think, and if you open the second or the third slide, you will find somehow an energy bandogram like that, which is the N, B, N junction. As in, again, this is N, B, N junction. Now, what we have is P, I, N junction. So when we have a P, I, N junction, we have a very uh, we have here a Fermi level more close to the valency uh, uh, band on the left hand side, and we have a Fermi level more close to the conduction band on the right hand side. That's why we have something like that. Now, current will not be fused. As you can see here, current will tunnel. Now, this current will tunnel, and maybe one or two slides later, we will see what are the conditions of tunneling. But as you can see, current here will tunnel this barrier to cross from here to there. Let's understand this concept very, very, very well. What you can see or what is interesting here is the position of Fermi level. Here we have a very, very, very unusual position of Fermi. Usually we know that the Fermi level exists in the energy bandogram. The Fermi level definition is the level where below the Fermi level you can find electrons, above the Fermi level you can find empty states. That's right. Whenever the electrons is below the Fermi level, it's an occupied, it's a bounded electron. Once the electrons go out up above the Fermi level, it becomes a free electron. This is the definition. But again, usually we study that, or we usually used to see the Fermi level in the energy gap of the material. So it should be something like here or something like that. Now you see the Fermi level inside the, the valency band on the peak time, and it's inside the conduction band in the other time. This what we studied before under the name of a degenerate semiconductors. If you remember, in the degenerate semiconductors, you highly doped the material so that the Fermi level may enter either the valency band, if it's a p-type material, or the conduction band, if it's an n-type material. So what we did here is that we have a highly doped p-type p-type junction, and we have a highly doped n-type junction, then you have a thermodynamic equilibrium, but in a degenerate semiconductor. Why is it so, what, why it's a, a thermodynamic equilibrium? Because when it's thermodynamic equilibrium, you have a, a flat Fermi level. Here we have a flat Fermi level, but it's not a usual Fermi level. So, what is the, in the left-hand side? Okay, as we mentioned here, that in the left-hand side, below the Fermi level, I have a huge number of electrons, occupied electrons. And on the right-hand side, above the Fermi level, I have, I have a huge number of empty states. What if this barrier is too thin so that due to the gate voltage, electron can drift or not can drift, and so electron can tunnel from the left-hand side to the right hand side, and then you can move, or you can have a current, which is what we can call a tunneling current. This is a very most important slide in this lecture, is to understand this energy bandogram. Usually in the final exam, I will ask about concepts, as I mentioned in this chapter. So one of the concepts is to understand what is meant by a tunneling field effect transistors, or how this tunneling field effect field effect transistor right so please try to understand this slide very very well because one of the core slides in this lecture so let's now see the effect here or sorry i'm not now let's turn to another type of uh, a, 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 of a, a tifus which is a hetero junction we you know you know uh, that what's meant by hetero junction we already studied the hetero junction in the end of the 
metal uh, uh, semiconductor junction, if you remember. So what means by Hetero junction is to implement a semiconductor, semiconductor junction using two different types of material. Here we have indium, uh, I think we, I mentioned it somehow, yeah. Here we have indium arsenide in all way, but it's p doped here, it's undoped here, it's intrinsic here, but all of these junctions is a homo junction. Now it's an indium arsenide, uh, indium arsenide junction, it's a homo junction. What if we have two different types of material here and there and there? So you will have what's called the hetero junction. So this is also one of the very interesting properties or one of the very interesting flexibilities in the T-fields that you can have a hetero junction T-field and somehow it shows a very good uh, results in the literature. Another concept, or this is one, again, as I mentioned earlier, this is a research lecture, not a normal lecture, so I will use data from literature many, many times now. This is a very famous silicon fit made by the lab in UC Berkeley. They are the leading lab in this TFIT transistor. They make the most powerful TFIT across the world in 2018, two years ago. This is the data, and they succeeded to make a full it. Here we have what's called the scanning electron microscope. This is a real microscope images for the people. Of course, this is for your interest. Also, another trial. Here we have a trial from Intel, we have a trial from Penn State, and we have one from Notre Dame. Another trial to make a TFIT. Again, as I mentioned earlier, if we have a commercial TFIT, then we will have processors eight times faster than the normal processors. Also, this is a demonstration for the stru structure of the Intel uh, T-fit. As you can see, we have an insulating, semi-insulating layer as a substrate, and then we have the NIP junction, as I, demonstrating, I, I, as I demonstrated earlier. This is a structure for the T-fit in that. Again, this is an important slide. Now, we, don't, we are not able to use the semi-classical model. So we have what's called the atomistic quantum modeling. The atomistic quantum, atomistic quantum modeling is a quantum modeling based on what we can say, or what we, we say is that it's what's called uh, the polistic transform, not the normal uh, drift diffusion transform. Now we have another phenomena, we have another tunneling phenomena. Okay, let's go on again. Of course, this is for the, your demonstration. This is a very, very, very perfect and, and amazing uh, simulation for the NBI uh, junction. Now, this is the B side, this is the N side, and this is the channel, and this is where the tunneling should occur. This demonstration shows the, the, the shape of the energy bandogram when the VG is equal to zero. As you can see, when the VG is equal to zero, there's still some width for the channel, as you can see here, and electron is trying to jump, but it may succeed or not. So basically, the current is zero, because now, as you can see, we still, we, we did not offer any voltage on the gate, so electrons are not motivated to jump from here to there, or basically the electrons are not able to tunnel. Now, what if this, voltage increase. For example, now we have a VG of about 0.2 voltage. Now, as you can see, the channel, or now it's not the channel, it's the tunnel. The tunnel becomes very, 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 very short. So electrons can tunnel from the left-hand side to the right-hand side, as you can see. And now you can have what's called the tunneling effect. So this is a very interesting uh, demonstration or, 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 uh, or uh, simulation to how that width of the tunnel vary by, by varying the VG, that's why why we have a current here. So this is a very interesting. Story. Let's now do some, or let's now do, show some uh, results from literature here, the effect of the gate lens, the effect of the channel lens here, as you can see, when you vary the channel lens, this, I think this is for a single gate transistor. I believe that uh, most of you who are dealing with MOSFETs or FITs in their um, in, in their uh, uh, module project, they know what is a single gate and what is a double gate because, as we mentioned earlier, that uh, some tec new technologies has been demonstrated in literature. Here, for example, what's called a comparison between a single gate and a double gate. 
where we have a double gate and the most but this is somehow a trick in order to reduce the channel length. Now he's also a, a comparison between the performance of a single gate and a double gate. Also, this is the transfer, the transfer uh, uh, transistor characteristics or the VG is the IV curve. This is the drain current. This is the gate current and a, a different VDS. And you can, you can see that how the VDS can control the current as in the normal MOSFETs, but with somehow different behavior. Another uh, important issue, which is the capacitance actually. If you remember in my first slide, I say that we are expecting a 10, uh, uh, 10 times the reduction in the delay. And if you remember, I said to you that the capacitance is a play, play a very important role with the delay of the MOSFETs or the VFITs. So here the capacitance, many people here, this guy from uh, UCLA have made a very interesting study a few months ago in 2020 about the capacitance in the TFITs and how the capacitance of the TFITs vary and he can demonstrate that the capacitance in the TFITs is lower than the capacitance in the normal MOSFET. That's why the expected delay is lower. So as I mentioned, it was something different. It's a different lecture. It's a different uh, way of dealing with such a topic. It's a more toward a research topic. What I'm, I, 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 I try to you to understand is that in technology, it's not only this semiconductor course. We have a lot of technologies. If you're interested, you have to go to the internet and read more and more about all these devices. We have what's called the tunneling field effect transistors. Uh, also, we have a very interesting device which is called the, the thin fit or the thin field effect transistor. This thin, film, uh, thin, this thin film effect transistor actually is very, very, very interesting in technology because it's the main building light units of what's called the OLEDs or the organic light emitting tiles. In the OLEDs, each pixel in your device or in your TV, in your screen is a T fit, is a thin film field, field effect transistor. So this is one of the very interesting uh, technologies nowadays. So in the exam, if you have a question, what should you understand from this lecture? I would say that this slide, this slide is the most important slide from for, for, for my point of view. How you can plot an energy band diagram for a TFIT, how can you understand the theory of carrier transport on the feet, on, of the TFIT only from a, a conceptual way not from mathematical way, as I mentioned, because these equations are out of scope of our course because it needs another background, which is a quantum background. So this is the end of this final lecture. Now I hope that you enjoy the lecture. I hope that you enjoy the course overall. It's um, it was for me. It's one of my interesting courses to teach semiconductor devices. But I hope that you also interest this course. Now you have to start to think about your assessment. As you know, you have a home assessment, you have a final by end of, end of May, inshallah. So I wish you all of luck in, this, uh, in these two assessments. Uh, from our side, we will have a series of uh, revision lectures. In the next uh, week, we will be up due to the Eastern break. I believe that next Sunday will be Eastern. So happy Eastern to all of you. And then by next week, I believe it's week number 11. So by week number 12, we will start a series of re revision lectures. We will start a series of rehearsals. We will have first, maybe today, I will publish to you. Today is Saturday, by the way, which is April 11, because most probably you will see this video on another day. So uh, today I will publish to you a rehearsal for the uh, home assignment. I will have something like two weeks in order you can see, examine, uh, test what is inside, and then we will manage a date. Maybe this is the same date like our lecture, normal lecture in, uh, on Sunday at two o'clock, or maybe it's a different date based on your request. So we will manage the day to go together and solve this rehearsal before you go to the real home assignment. Again, it was very pleasure for me to be with you in this course. I hope you enjoy the course. I hope you get benefits from the course. And I hope that in your next uh, um, coming semesters and in your future work, you get used from what you have been learning from this course. 
Thank you again, my dear students, for your concentration during all these course. And maybe I can, maybe I have a, another good opportunity to see you in the next course in your year four. Thank you very much.